Hi, I'm State Representative Travis Kotor of the 35th Legislative District, and thank you for watching this video today. I just wanted to cover really quickly as we head into the 2024 legislative session, which will be a short session this year, so it'll move really quick and really fast. Some of the legislative priorities that I'm going to be focusing on this year. Of course, I just wanted to highlight that I'm the Assistant Ranking Member of the House Appropriations Committee. I'm newly on the K-12 Committee, and I'm also the Assistant Ranking Member of the Human Services Youth and Early Learning Committee. In the last committee, Human Services Youth and Early Learning, I have a host of bills this session to address, sadly, some very needless deaths of at-risk youth in our state. Fentanyl is one of the rising killers of kids in our state and I have a bill this session that will create an imminent harm for parents who are using hard drugs like fentanyl to be able to safely remove those children from those homes so that they tragically do not die. And that's something that we have to pass this year in order to prevent dozens of needless deaths every single year, especially as fentanyl really pours through our streets and is harming so many people. On top of that, our social workers are really overworked right now. They have unmanageably high caseloads, way too much overtime, and they're running really thin. And one of the things that we're starting to see is the attacks of social workers in our state from people who don't want to comply with them trying to protect kids. And so one of the things that we're going to try to do also in a bill is to protect social workers, make sure that they have access to first responders when they go to the door, and ensure and signal that we should protect our state workers, and also to create a Class C felony if a social worker is attacked. And that is the same exact protection that we give our state ferry workers here in the state of Washington. Also in the same committee, we are working on a lot of different child care options. Right now we have a problem in our state where child care is very unattainable, very unaffordable. We're trying to make that more affordable, trying to clean up those child care deserts. And I have a bill that will target those child care deserts to really get them the relief that they need so that we can start to see child care in our communities that are rural or not in the most urban centers. On top of that, we're going to try to make some improvements in the system for foster parents as well. In the space of education, we need to do a lot better to avoid the McCleary 2.0, which is not fully funding special ed. That could cost us a lot of money in the future, and I'm sure most of us don't want the courts to decide how that happens. But we do need to treat our special ed students a lot better than we do right now. They are not second-class citizens. They deserve a world-class education just like everyone else. And we do need to fully fund special ed in our state. And I have a bill that will do that for the schools that are most impacted in our communities by making sure that the smallest schools that are most disproportionately affected do not have a special ed cap that they have to abide by. On top of that, we're going to really look at making some special ed policy changes that really help support parents and kids with special needs, and then also help smaller schools help get the resources they need to make sure that special ed students have the services and supports that they need. This summer, I took a tour of McNeil Island, which houses the Special Commitment Center, the SCC, and also the Pierce County Secure Community Transition Facility, both operated by Department of Social and Health Services, or DSHS where they house people with the moniker SVP, or sexually violent predator. These are class three sex offenders, the worst of the worst in our state. And right now the state has to abide by constitutional rules to make sure that they have a less restrictive alternative release in certain circumstances. We were surprised last session in the 35th district when unbeknownst to anybody, there was a plan to put almost 11 sexually violent predators in South Thurston County in Tenino. We put a stop to that and I'm proud of that. But going forward, we need real policy solutions to make sure that our communities are safe and they are notified and that there is a lot of these loopholes that are fixed within that entire SVP LRA system. We're going to have three pieces of legislation this year on that topic and there will be more to come on that when details emerge closer to the session but we have listened to our constituents and we will be doing something very dramatic and powerful in that subject.
Overall, of course, homelessness, public safety, substance abuse, these things continue to be a huge problem in Washington state, along with, of course, tangential things that go along with it, like housing and mental health. And so these are things we have to continue to work on. I have a bill that wants to refund the police this year to make sure that police in districts like the 35th with the lowest per capita police actually have enough police coverage on the roads to be able to help keep the communities safe and to give those law enforcement officers in our communities the relief that they need in order to do their jobs and so that we can recruit and retain good police officers and corrections officers in our communities. That's all I got for now. Thanks for tuning in. Please tune back in on January 8th for the start of the legislative session and hope to see you soon. Thanks.